We have a new guest, never having been on the show before ever. Um, it probably, uh, he looks familiar. I'm sure that you think that this is Brian White, but uh, Brian, what have you done with Brian White? I've replaced him. Uh, no, I get that a lot. I hear that all the time. People come up to me. There was a gentleman who came up and uh, uh, filmed a, a bunch of segments at Texas and said, hey, anyone ever tell you, you look like Brian from my Tesla White uh, weekend? And I said, that is the most hurtful thing I think you can <laughs> say to anyone. Uh, but I still shared my thoughts with him about the factory. So that was nice of you. That was nice of you to con yeah. continue the conversation in the face of such a put down. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Well, Brian is here today. We're going to be talking about the thing that maybe Brian is most famous for, and that is for having his foot, feet, his many feet in many different parts of the world at any given time. And Brian, I'd like to start with your footprint in Austin because lots of stuff. There's so much going on with Tesla in the last week or so. I don't know if this is pre-earnings, or, or whether Elon just got up on the right side of the bed and he says, okay, let's go. Let's start making things happen because we've got new stuff on the bot, new stuff about Reno. And anyway, let's start with Austin though. Uh, Joe Tegmeyer said this morning that it looks like they might be installing some new paint stuff. What do you think? So at the south end of the factory, there's an extension underway. Uh, this was rumored to be for compact production. I pushed back on that until we had any kind of actual confirmation. And we got that confirmation from Elon directly uh, about a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. And if we're seeing paint equipment being delivered to the south end of the building, where the paint shop has not been located before, that very strongly suggests that this has to do with the compact. There have been theories that the compact would not have paint, that... Uh, Tom Ju famously said, paint is expensive. He told Matthew Donegan Ryan when asked, will it be painted? But even the Cybertruck has paint, even though the exterior does not. Anything that's stamped steel, carbon steel, requires paint. So even if this has a plastic shell or a stainless steel, or they found some way to get by without using paint, that doesn't mean there won't be paint on some part of it. And this indicates that the pace is moving very nicely in Texas in terms of the compact. And I do think it will be a much shorter time from the announcement of the compact to the delivery to avoid years of frustration and a, a potential Osborne effect where buyers would hold off on buying a three or Y waiting for that compact that can solve their problem. So if it is in fact the paint equipment for the Gen 3 being delivered at this point, how does that impact your anticipation of timing for the vehicle? Is it, does it, did they put that stuff in six months ahead, nine months ahead, a year ahead? When, when, when would you say that's going to be delivered? So they do not put it in a year ahead in Shanghai. They were moving dirt a year ahead. Yeah. So this is, this strongly reinforces the theory that we will see some production of some kind of compact, even if it's very, very low volume, by the end of this year. Cool. Very, very cool. Now, having said that, we've had a lot of folks out there saying various things about when the Gen 3 vehicle will be made in other factories. So I don't know what you said. I think you've already made a comment on this before, but I get confused with all the different Brian's running around. Um, my son among them. And then there's this other guy, Brian Wong. I don't know who he is. Anyway, we have these, all these Brian's. So do you believe that there will be any simultaneity or close to simultaneous production of the Gen 3 vehicle in Berlin or in uh, Shanghai? Or do you think it will be many, many, many months or even years before Shanghai and Berlin come on steam? Perfect question. Boy, Randy, you usually do terrible, and that was magical. So I, I just really wanted to give you kudos there. The, there will be a lag between them. We can see this factory going up. We can see equipment already being installed. When it comes to Berlin, Shanghai, and Mexico, we haven't seen construction yet. Now, it could be that Shanghai has another location nearby, that we just don't see. There's so much construction 
in the Pudong district of Shanghai that you would not notice another massive factory going up. Uh, it's just so common. So, but Berlin, we know it hasn't broken ground. There was a recent uh, community meeting where community members had an opportunity to come in, see the plans, hear from the, the engineers, and it apparently went very well. The comment window will be closing shortly. After that, they're expected to get to be able to move forward. Doesn't mean they will right away. Maybe they will. I expect to see, I still expect to see Berlin, Shanghai, and Mexico rolling out kind of at the same time. Mm. If, you, if you've got the design dialed in enough that you can build it in one place, it is my hope you can build it in all places. And especially if there are a variety of form factors, it would be great if Texas had one model and Mexico had a different. Mm. They're close enough that yeah. they can ship in both directions and it would work just fine. Um, and then you've got all parts in common at each factory. So you don't have two different models or six different models of compact at one factory, especially not Texas, because that extension is, well, it's quite small compared to other factories that Tesla has built, the extension part anyway. We're talking maybe a million square feet. Sounds, sounds like a lot, but in, in Texas, that's, I mean, that's already a very big factory. It'll now be <laughs> among, among the biggest in the world. It'll probably be ranked in the top 12 or 13 buildings in the world by square footage upon completion. So you've got, so I still think now I think Texas will be the first to unveil the compact and that the other factories will follow no less than six months later, maybe even a whole year later, maybe mm. the end of 25 I for see. Berlin, Mexico, and, uh, and uh, Shanghai. All right. Well, uh, moving on to more information about Austin. We had the information last week that the dry cathode batteries, no, the dry cathodes were not coming on stream. And so they were having to import them. Did I get the right ones? It's the cathode, the anode. I'm commonly, you know, losing my mind. But one of those <laughs> was not able yet to be made in Austin. And so they were importing them. Do you have any updates at all on that? Uh, or, or do you feel that that was correct reporting? Anyway, I'll let you go. There are some vexing problems with the 4680 form factor that I have not been able to get answers to. I'm asking the right questions. I'm asking the right people, but it hits too close to what's covered by their NDA. When I spoke with Jen from Tesla, who used to work at the 4680 pilot line, I asked the question, I said Panasonic and others had expected to have their 4680s rolled out by now. And both and all of them have been put on hold. They've been delayed. We're just going to make more 2170s instead. I asked, is there something particularly vexing about the 4680 form factor? Not that would cause Tesla problems, but that would cause other companies problems. Mm. And, and her answer was, if I answered that, it would give you too much information about Tesla. I cannot answer that. So that tells me there is, yes, and, yes. That it's, and that it's universal across manufacturers. Uh, what is that problem? I don't know. Maybe right. maybe the rollers are too wide and they can't get uniform coatings. So the fact that they are not yet to the dry, uh, dry cathode stage doesn't mean that, that Texas is not producing batteries. It just means that they're not ramped the way they expect it to be. It was hoped that the 4680s in Texas would be able to satisfy all production for Cybertruck and Model Y out of Texas, right. and it can't. Not so yet. those, so exactly. So the Model Ys are once again being made with 2170 cells from Nevada, and those cells were supposed to be going into the semi and to the Fremont plant. And so as a result, the Fremont plant is now importing batteries from Korea and other places to meet demand there, and even LFP cells from China for the standard range models. If your battery is made in Korea or Japan or China, you do not qualify for the IRA credit today. Oh, even for Korea? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, they have to be North American. Oh, okay. So that would be another reason why they're not rushing into production in Mexico is they may be waiting for 
LG or BYD or whomever to get their battery factories built in North America so that there'll be more supply. We thought we would have more battery companies online by now than we do. And it's insane. I don't remember which of the big three, but they went to Congress and said, look, we need more time on the battery sourcing requirements under the IRA because so few cars qualify now that the phase in of material sourcing requirements is getting more strict. <clears throat> and all I can think is you didn't know two months ago where you get your batteries. What are you guys doing? Your failure is hard earned and well-deserved. Yes. So uh, yes. Yeah, so there is fungibility of batteries in terms of what they can do, but yeah, the production in, in the U S in Texas and Cato road is deeply disappointing. All right. And then let's turn to Reno as my last, uh, the last place that I'm interested in right now. And that tons and tons of news over the last two weeks out of Reno. Um, but the biggest news would be that they had an actual groundbreaking conversation or they had some kind of a party to celebrate the fact they were going to be breaking ground, but not on an extension of the, or a, continuation of the original building, but rather on an outbuilding, a substantially a substantial outbuilding, but a uh, another building uh, a couple of hundred yards away from the primary building um, that will do semi trucks only according to current, according to my best information. And that that would mean that if there's going to be robots or if there's going to be uh, batteries made in Reno, it won't be in this new building. What are you hearing that uh, is the same or different or could, could confuse us even more? I can confuse you in all kinds of ways, Randy. But the news I have is, I'm sure, from the same sources as yours. Uh, Zane out there who does the drone flights um, gets us some pretty good information. Um, when he sticks to the facts, he's pretty accurate. When he speculates, um, it's less accurate. But the it is very evident that heavy equipment is out there, that grading is underway, and that a footprint has emerged that is of sufficient size in which to build anything. But I would believe that it's for the semi. If it was for the battery, you'd want it as a contiguous part of the building. But a semi factory could be standalone. They already have a building just right down the street from it, right there, kind of on campus, which is where they have been building the semi it's the building in which the semi delivery party was held mm. a, over a year ago now 13 months ago that i was <clears throat> physically removed from that <clears throat> they had to well i mean i i had to try man i had to try and they uh that place uh, it, it is of the right size why don't they just keep doing it in that other building I think they need a purpose-built building that can allow for a better use of vertical space mm -hmm. so they can eke out every efficiency possible. The hesitation over the past year appears to be batteries because for every semi that you build, that's 10 cars that will not qualify for the IRA credit. Right. And if your buyers are going to lose $75,000, that's a significant chunk of the total value of that semi in the first place. So uh, very exciting to see Nevada underway. No idea what the timeline is. I'm hopeful it can be moving within a year. But and I we, said that a year ago. <laughs> and well, and we have Panasonic that is well along in their uh, uh, new facility uh, that they're building. Uh, so in addition to any increases they might be able to still get out of, uh, out of Reno, they have an entire new building, which I think is going to be roughly the same production around... 35 don't gigawatts? Know. Don't know. I don't know. Don't yeah. Know. Okay. All right. So that's the Reno's. Oh, and then my other question on Reno though. So if they pull the, if they're going to empty that other building and, and, and start building the semi trucks in this new building, they'll have space there. They've already taken out some of the um, uh, mega packs, uh, mega pack uh, um, factory operations out of the Reno original building. Uh, and move those down to the down to um, uh, Lathrop. So wouldn't that give some space where they could be building robots or building uh, 4680 uh, lines? 
So on the 4680 lines, I think they would want them to be contiguous with the other 4680 lines, have it all right in one spot. In terms of bots, that space that they would clear out, I because I can't imagine why they would want to keep both of them operational, would be an absolutely ideal size and shape for bot construction. Because you don't need 30, 40, 100 feet of vertical space to assemble bots, right. Right. even... 20, 30 feet, more than enough. 20 right. feet is probably more than enough. You could have all the different pieces and then pull them together at the at the end there. And it would be it would be a good a good idea if they can get the manufacturing capability there in terms of talent and manpower, then it, it would be a fine space. But the bots are small enough. You could mass produce them kind of anywhere. Yeah. So I got. I had just thought of another question. Uh, having been in manufacturing and warehousing pretty much my entire adult life, we have this concept of warehouse on wheels. Now, I invented the concept of warehouse on wheels years ago because there were times when we didn't have enough space in our warehouse and we had product coming in from overseas or, or plastics coming in from a train you know, where we couldn't bring it into the warehouse. And so we had to park that container out in our parking lot. Now I'm joking that I invented that because lots of manufacturers and wholesalers commonly will keep a container for a week or a month or a year or permanently park a few containers because they just don't have the warehouse space. But these, but Tesla's taking this to a completely new level that I've ever seen before with literally what appears to be maybe a hundred um, uh, containers parked out in a field where they're keeping just-in-time inventory. Is this is this something you are aware of anybody doing in the past, or, or is this a new thing that Tesla is doing? Is this a permanent solution? Is do you have any theories on that? Because otherwise, we need to research it for sure. It is not unique to Tesla, but it is a fairly new concept that's only been made possible since digital inventorying became great. You remember in warehouses, it used to be that this shelf is where we always put this right. part. <laughs> right. Otherwise, no one will know where it is. But with the warehouse on wheels, everything is digitally managed and inventoried. So it does. It literally does not matter where it is. It's, it's, I need this item. It's in spot 26. Great. Go get it. So uh, there was a different concept that they had used in Fremont where they would put the parts in this big robotic silo. I don't know if you saw that, no. but it's just, oh, it's a big silo full of robotic arms that grab inventory off very high shelves in a way that humans would be poorly adapted to. Right. And that's why they didn't exist. If you look at the satellite footage of Fremont, you'll see a couple of newish, tallish, skinny buildings. Mm. And those are inventory. Wow. They, they didn't, have space for a warehouse on wheels yeah. in ways that would be effective for a factory of that size. So they didn't have that choice, but anywhere you have space, it just makes more sense to do it that way. When Shanghai first opened the warehouse on wheels was just, all of them were backed up to all the docks. They just yeah. left containers at the docks. That is the warehouse. And it's wonderful because as long as you know where everything is and you do, it uh, makes it very smooth and efficient and, uh, prevents you from having a warehouse, which is by its nature, the wrong size. It's always too small or too large. You're always paying for something you don't need or needing something you can't have. Oh, and massive amounts, massive amounts of infrastructure that every single uh, warehouse has to have in terms of sprinklers and, and uh, fire, you know, fire prevention and heat and sometimes even air conditioning. I mean, it just goes on and on. So I can imagine the, the savings uh, and with containers last year being so cheap after the great upheaval in the supply chain, uh, and there was hundreds of thousands of containers that were just sitting empty, I would imagine they were able to buy a bunch of containers for for pretty low price. Containers in the U.S. Uh, became too numerous for sure, uh, because during the pandemic, containers would come over, get emptied, and then just left there. They didn't get put on the ships to go back to China, which created some real problems real quickly. Uh, and the only company I know that had the foresight to look around it was Amazon. And they found some very clever ways to solve this very big immutable problem uh, and keep 
your endless supply of junk coming. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> please follow Brian on My Tesla Weekend not.com. Don't go looking for myteslaweekend.com. You won't find it. And uh, you might even look at our video from yesterday where Brian, you know, regaled us with a whole bunch of stuff about bots. Um, and that would be a card right here. I mean, it, it's really worth watching, believe it or not. It really, it was really. <laughs> it was, so Brian, thank you as always for coming on board. And uh, I think we'll just say goodbye to everybody now. All right. Bye. <laughs> it's been great talking to you.